All right, guys, so uh, right now I'm waiting for some parts for my fuel system. Uh, I went through and looked at all the different um, fittings I have, and I'm short a couple of fittings, so I'm going to need to get a couple more 90s and a couple more straights before we go and uh, mount the fuel system and um, get that all finished up. So I thought that, uh, you know, while I'm waiting for parts to come in, I'll make a video about. Um, this, this actually goes back to when I first started doing YouTube. Uh, I made a video called uh, uh, Fox Body Mustang Better 60 Foot Times, I think it's called. I'll have to look at it. I'll, I'll put a link over here. But uh, I wanted to, kind of, it's, it's a real popular video and I, I did that video like when I first started and I, I wasn't very good at explaining things and I was nervous and I didn't, I didn't do a very good job. So. But it's a very popular video, and uh, so I know that's what people are interested in, and I know that's what they need help with. So I decided to make a, another version of that, but with a little bit more information. Uh, not too crazy, you know, not getting into really heavy duty race car stuff, but more, of a car, you know, like a street car that you wanted to hook better on at the track, okay? Uh, so I'm going to show you a basic setup, and, I'm, and I made a little illustration here, to, you know, to kind of understand what's going on with the suspension and, and how it works. So uh, what I have here is basically um, I screwed a couple pieces of PVC to a little whiteboard here to kind of illustrate what's going on with suspension. Okay, so. This is this this right here represents your upper control arm. This represents your lower control arm. Okay, this line here, which I used a piece of conduit, kind of just sitting on the tire there, balancing very precariously. <laughs> uh, that represents your anti-squat line. Okay, that's your anti-squat. So. The video I made before, um, uh, let me go and explain kind of the, what, I, what I said before about how the way Fox Body suspension works, the four link. Uh, so let's get into the car and I'll kind of go over that really quickly. So here, here we have the, you know, a basic setup. This is a really street style setup, okay? Single adjustable shocks, uh, UPR uppers and lowers. They're the, the bushing type, not the heim joint type. So it's very basic. Uh, I have a UPR anti-roll bar and uh, four cylinder springs with one coil cut off. Okay, so the way I explained it in the first video, the, the, you know, the, the original video was that when your control arm, when your upper control arm, when you lower your car, you're changing the, the control arm angle a little bit, okay? So what we'll do is we'll look at this and let's say you're, you know, at normal ride height uh, of a Fox body, your, your upper control arm is sitting like this and your lower control arm, say, is sitting pretty level or pointing down. Because that, from the factory, Fox bodies kind of, they, they kind of sit like that, okay? This is more level and uh, this is probably more level too. So let's say that's, that's pretty level, the lower control arm. The upper control arm is pointing down just a touch, okay? Uh, and what that does is at, at stock, this is stock ride height. Now this is just an illustration. This is, don't, don't say this is the exact angles of what's going on. I'm just doing it to kind of represent, okay? Uh, so if you draw an imaginary line through this, this line's gonna go way, way out here, okay? And then this line's going to come way out here, and they're going to meet. They're going to meet somewhere over in here, okay? So that is going to be below your anti-squat line. Now, anti-squat line is this is just a representation. This does not mean that this is where the anti-squat line is on this car, okay? You look at it's, it's the center of gravity is where the anti-squat line will intersect. Okay, the, the center of gravity could be here, it could be here, it could be here, I, I don't know. You know, we just don't know. So, you know, if you, if you scale your car 
and you know you, you would find out where your center of gravity is that way with a little bit of math knowing how much weights on the front how much weights on each corner uh, side to side weight or whatever and you can find you know you can figure out where your center of gravity is it might be here it might be here I don't know okay this is an imaginary line the, so what, what's happening is is when you lower your car okay so like, like I said before if you make these two lines come all the way out, they're gonna meet somewhere here, which is below your anti-squat line. That's, you don't want that in a drag car, okay? That means the car's gonna squat if it's way over here, in front of this line or below it, anywhere below it. The car is gonna squat, okay? You don't want it to squat. You want it, this to separate, okay? So when you lower the car, you're basically taking this angle and you're, and you're bringing it in like this, it's pointing down a little bit more, okay? So that's, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring your, bring the, the, these two lines intersecting, not way out here, but further back, okay? So it's gonna bring you in to where it's above the, the anti-squat line, which is where you want it, okay? And, and I've, like I said before, you know, Team Z makes a uh, relocation bracket that actually puts this up higher, okay, which in order for it to hook to the same point on the chassis, you know, your pickup, your forward pickup point on the chassis, it's, the angle is going to be like this, okay. That's exaggerated, but just, you know, I'm just doing it for kind of explanation purposes. So what that does, that's going to bring your, 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 <clears throat> instant center or your imaginary point it's gonna put it somewhere in this area okay see it's coming like right right through here so you're it puts you above your center of your anti squat line okay so and then also another company BMR makes a uh, a lower control arm uh, relocation that you can lower this down a little bit okay which then if this stays the same this is going to the pickup point is going to basically do that it's going to aim up a little bit so you see what's happening here your lines are becoming further and further back okay they're, fur they're coming further back and up so what what does that do okay that basically makes your, the, the, the tire bite harder. The further back you get with your instant center, uh, it's gonna hit the tire harder and harder and harder, okay? So, on a low horsepower car like this, uh, that's, that's what you want. You, you wanna get the maximum amount of bite you can. Uh, on a higher horsepower car, that's not necessarily always desirable, okay? So, if you were to set it up, with maximum bite on say a thousand horsepower radio car uh, that's not really going to work too well because what's going to happen is it's going to bite really hard initially but then it's going to shake the tires after 20 30 feet and uh, so that's why you would need to move this line out further 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 out here closer to your your center of gravity so it kind of softens that, uh, you know, you get your initial hit, but then it kind of softens it to settle into the run. Okay, so, so what, what's happening here with when you, when you launch, okay, when your suspension is like this. So you have this is hooked to the housing, okay. This is, you know, your, say your housing is here and your wheel's here, okay. So when this is hooked to the chassis, this, this point here, and, and this point is hooked to your, uh, the top of your housing, your, your differential housing, and the diff wants the whole entire housing is twisting a little bit, okay, about two or, two or three degrees, it's twisting, okay, it's, go, it, it's gonna wanna straighten this out, okay? So if this, if this wants to straighten out, what's gonna happen? If this point here, I should have, I should have made the, uh, put the screw on this end so I can show it biting down like this. But I think you guys can understand that 
if, if this point can't move, but this point can, which meaning, meaning it's hooked to the rear end, and then what will happen is, is this whole thing will want to straighten out and go down. Okay, this whole thing is going to want to bite downwards because it's wanting to straighten this control arm out. Okay, so if it was like this, for instance, if that was straight, say more back to the way it is stock, when the housing rotates, wh where is this going? This is wanting to straighten out, but it's already straight. So it's, it, you're not putting any pressure downwards on the, on the, uh, on the housing. You're not, you're not you're not using the rotation of the housing to your benefit, okay? So if that's the way it looks stock, you, and, and lowering it gives you this, okay? You see the difference. You see how when that control arm straightens out, it's, it's wanting to twist and go down, okay? Now, let's say you were, you, in order to get the cart, the car to squat, if you wanted it to actually squat, you know, you would keep it at your normal ride height. This would be up here, okay, which would put your center of gravity, it would put your, uh, your anti-squat point or your, your instant center, sorry, your instant center point, it would put it way out here. You see, if you put it, you just follow this line, it would just keep going and going and going way out front. What, so you're not going to get any separation here of the rear end. You're not going to get any. It's, it's going to want to squat. Okay. That's the way that works. So there's a lot of ways you can play with that. Okay. For this car, uh, and this is only advice for cars that are lower horsepower, um, you know, not making big power to where you have to tie the front end down, um, which is I had to do that on my race car. Uh, you know, you want to tie it down to keep it from wheeling. This is not going to be a problem with this because we don't make the power to flip the thing over. So I keep the front shocks, you know, I have strange single adjustables up front and I keep them totally loose. Uh, so I can get maximum travel out of that. Uh, here, I'll put a little video in of the run I made at Cletus and Cars where the car, it picked the wheels up a few inches and, and left really nicely. That's the way I have it set up. I have it set up completely soft on the rear and the front, okay? On these single adjustable shocks, these strange single adjustables, uh, the only thing you can adjust is the rebound, okay? Which is the extension of the shock, which means the front is totally loose, which means it can extend as fast as it wants, as much as it wants. Um, the rear, the same way, okay? I'm not worried about tire shake because I'm not pouring power on, you know, like the, I'm making, whatever power I'm making, I'm making. It's 400 horsepower, it is what it is. So 30, 40, 50, 60 feet down the track, it's not more, more, more boost is not coming in. It's not, it's not enough to make the tires shake, okay? So I can get as aggressive as I want with it. I don't give that same advice to someone who's making a lot of power. You, you can't do that. You have to take, you have to soften the hit a little bit, okay? And, and more use like the, the radio versus the world guys use like uh, a lot of power management. Power management is the key. The best, the guys who win are the ones who know how to manage the power. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of better explain how this works with, uh, you know, the new guys that are buying these cars that, cause I'm a, I'm a member to a lot of the forums and I see a lot of uh, questions where you can tell that you know, they don't know a lot about this stuff. So I know this is good information for people. So, and the other thing is also weight. I mean, I, I've tried to take as much weight off the front of the car as possible, you know, with the, with the manual rack and the Team ZK member and eliminating some of the stuff that you don't need, like the, uh, you know, the fender, plastics, all, all that stuff. The, the front bumper is gone. There's no uh, front bumper core support. Uh, I don't really drive this car on the street anymore. Um, when I was driving on the street, I did, I kept the, the bumper support because if you get into an accident, you, the front of your car is pretty, is going to be pretty beat up. So that's some of the things I do 
uh, to get to get the 60 foot down yeah that's how you get a car to hook that's how everybody does it you know that's there's really no big secret to it if you go online and look up um, you know instant center and um, anti-squat it'll it'll give you uh, kind of give you the same you know not maybe in this way but you know kind of explain it the same way okay so yeah that's pretty much how it works Hopefully you guys uh, got something out of it and you um, play with your suspension. And, and like I said before in the first video, that's the easiest way to get, uh, to get your car to have better 60 foot times is lower the rear, okay? Lower the rear, don't worry about the front. Let, let the front sit up. I know it may not look like a, a radial versus the world car that's slammed to the ground, but it's, this is different. This is this is more functional. This will get you to get you to get better 60 foot times at the track. Um, if you try to lower the front end and get it all slammed and make it look make it look really good, uh, it's probably you're probably gonna have issues um, spinning. Okay, on, on the launch. So, and pretty much uh, the 60 foot is is like the most important thing in drag racing. Uh, you know that's pretty much pretty much the only thing on a low horsepower car okay uh big horsepower like like i'm saying this i don't want to confuse people and and say things that are mis you know misleading I, i'm talking about cars that aren't high horsepower medium horsepower four five hundred six hundred horsepower that's where this applies okay uh like, like I'm saying, the only thing you can really change is your 60 foot. That's the only thing you can really play with. I mean, I don't care what you do. You're not, you know, on, you're not going to get more mile an hour. You can have a one two 60 foot, your mile an hour is going to be the same. You can have a one eight 60 foot, your mile an hour is going to be the same. So you're not making, you're, you know, you're not going to change anything. You're not going to make it up on the back end with a low horsepower car. Uh, uh, high, high horsepower cars, you can make it up on the, on the back end. So what we're doing here is uh, we're just trying to get the 60 foot as low as possible and then let the rest of it take care of itself down track. That's all you can do. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and um, I'll be back with uh, some more stuff as far as, you know, once I get those fittings for the fuel system and uh, we'll get that installed, get this thing fired up. Hopefully this lockdown ends and I can get this thing because I, I need to get it to a proper dyno and actually get someone to help me with tuning this thing um, on the E85. Uh, I, I know a little bit about it, but I'm not 100% confident I can do it right. So, uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it guys. Check you next time.